Right, everybody, good afternoon and welcome to our English lesson, first additional language for grade fours. We are currently in week nine. I want to just welcome all of you. Those of you who are chatting right now, let's stop chatting and focus on the lesson and um, keep the chats related to what's being discussed in the lesson. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Yeah, I see some responses. Let's go to the first slide. My name is Marilette. about poetry again we will do some really cute poems and um i think you guys I, I don't know have you guys checked out that website that i shared with you it's um ken nesbitt's website let me see who's checked it out Who of you have looked at Ken, you know, someone says not yet. Right, so don't forget about that. It's really nice. And you can see the poet reading his own poems. And as I said last time, there are some videos and audio. And he just writes really, really cool poems. So today we will look at more of his poems, just to expose you to another type of poem that maybe you haven't done before. Um, let's quickly do a recap on Wednesday's lesson. We focused on writing. I received someone's writing, so I just want to say thank you, but now I forgot whose homework. Let me just check. Naughty. So, yes, I think in the class you are Yandi, but thank you for your homework. I read your story. It's really cute. I hope I receive some more what-if stories. Remember, we're talking about what if you and your dog switched bodies. So you can tell the story from your perspective. You, can, you, you don't have to say one day there was a girl or there was a boy. You can speak about your own perspective or from your own perspective. And you can speak as if it's you waking up in your dog's body and the other way around. Right. So. Today, as I said, we are going to look at some poetry. You will learn about three different types of poems. So actually, in total, we will do four poems because they are quick, short, cute poems. Um, so the first three we won't even discuss, but I just, I think some of you, you like listening to stories and reading. So this is just like like that. You don't, you don't need to stress about answering anything. You could just enjoy the poem. And I will tell you um, about the types of poems because we will look at three different poems before we get to the actual one that we are going to discuss. And these three poems are all different types. We will talk more about that a little bit later. And you will, when we get to the final poem, we will do the same as what we did last time. You will, you will guess what the poem is about by looking at the pictures and then we will read through the poem or you will first listen to me reading the poem for you and then you will read it together or with me and then we will answer some questions we will identify the rhyme all those things that we usually do when we look at a poem so who of you enjoy poetry who of you enjoy enjoy reading this kind of poem i'm so glad to see that some of you like it I never used to like poetry until much later, until I was in high school. Then I really started enjoying poetry because we can say so much in such a small space if we use this poetic language and we use um, all these elements. So I do hope you guys will continue even after these lessons have finished or after you go back to school or... Um, even into high school, that you will continue just loving poetry, exposing yourself to more poetry. You can go to the library when it opens again and just take out a poetry book. Or you can 
write your own poems. Dane, please don't do that because then you are messing up the chat for everybody else. Right, I see some of you say it's the best. You love poetry, so I'm so happy to hear that. Um, so the three different types of poems. The first one, you don't need to remember these words, but try to just let it um, fall somewhere into the back of your mind so that when we read those poems, you, you can remember these three types. The first one is a narrative poem. They tell a story. Remember, if we have a narrator, it means someone who is at who is speaking at the moment. So that person is the narrator. And if we have a poem that sounds kind of like he's telling you this happened, then this happened, then this happened, we call that a narrative poem. So it's not usually a long story. It can be a short poem, but it just describes something. There's your key. Describes something that happened. Right, the next one is a lyric poem. A lyric poem describes a narr um, narrator's emotions or feelings. So how do I feel about Zoom classes, for example? Or how do I feel about my friend leaving um, or moving away to another town? How do I feel about winter how do i feel about lockdown so these poems we can see we can almost kind of feel with the poet as he writes we also feel what he is feeling and it's also um, it sounds very nice when you read them aloud these poems these lyric poems um it's it's it um they focus a lot on the sound of the poem it can be sad it can be nice it can be happy exciting and then we have descriptive poems they give a detailed description of a person an object or an event so if i said okay you go have you have to go write a poem about your cat that will be a descriptive poem so you will describe the fluffy hair and the cute little mouth or eyes or whiskers you will look at every detail of your cat and describe it and put the rhyme and the rhythm in and then you will end up with a descriptive poem so these are our three i hope you can remember these names just for this lesson you don't need to remember it for after this lesson because this is just just for fun um, narrative lyric and descriptive before i show you the first poem let's see who can remember the three types. I'm going to say what they do and you just type narrative, lyric or descriptive. All right, the first one, let's say this is the kind that describes someone's feelings and they are used or they should be read aloud. Which poem, which type of poem is that? There we go. Zinzi said lyric poem. I think Kayla and Zoe also meant to say lyric poem, but Zinzi has got the right spelling there. Lyric poem. Nokwanda also. Right. If I tell a story in my poem and I describe events, first, hap first this happened, then this happened, what kind of poem is that? There we go. Tokozo said narrative poem. And the spelling is correct. Great. Zoe Siseko also correct. Narrative. Neo also correct. And Zinzi. Right. And the last one, if I describe a person or an animal or an event and I give you details about that, what kind of poem is that? A descriptive. There we go. Dante, you've got it. And Zinzi. Oh, there we go. Everybody's got it. Descriptive poem. All right, let's look at the first one. The first one is called My Puppy Punched Me in the Eye. 
So we're going to, I'm just going to read it to you. You don't have to answer any questions. Just enjoy the poem and see. It's quite funny. It's quite silly. You can just enjoy it. All right, here we go. There's a picture for you. My puppy punched me in the eye. My rabbit whacked my ear. My ferret gave a frightful cry and roundhouse kicked my rear. My lizard flipped me upside down. My kitten kicked my head. My hamster slammed me to the ground and left me nearly dead. So my advice, avoid regrets. No matter what you do, don't ever let your family pets take, take lessons in Kung Fu. That's quite cute, right? So all these animals are attacking them because they had Kung Fu lessons. Who thinks, what do you think? Is this a narrative, lyric or descriptive poem? Narrative, lyric or descriptive? That's the only question you have to answer. Tokozo said narrative. Asiya said descriptive. Nia also said narrative. I can see why you said descriptive because it, it's describing an event or a few events. But if you're just looking at this happened, this happened, this happened, it sounds like a narrative poem, right? So all of you who said narrative, well done, you are correct. Let's move to the next one. Nicknames. Right. My aunt calls me Elizabeth. My grandma calls me Liz. My sister calls me Lisa. And the baby calls me Wiz. My uncle calls me Betty. While my grandpa calls me Beth. My brother calls me Dizzy Liz and or sometimes Lizard Breath. My teacher calls me Betsy and my friends all call me Bess. I find these nicknames more annoying than you'd ever guess. I wish that they would call me by my real name instead. I simply hate those nicknames. See, my real name is Fred. Why is this poem funny? Because all those nicknames, you think, you think this is a girl, right? Because um, the aunt calls him Elizabeth, and then it's Liz and Lisa and Wiz, Betty, Beth, Dizzy Liz, Lizard, Breath, Betty, Beth. So everything can be a nickname for Elizabeth. But then at the end, you find out this is not even a girl. This is a boy called Fred. So we have no idea where they get, uh, how they, why they call him all these girl, girly names. That's why he hates it so much, right? So what kind of poem is this? Is it a narrative, lyric, or descriptive poem? Dane and Dante, you guys said lyric poem. The rest of you, do you agree? Do you disagree? Zinzi also said lyric, Mulu said descriptive. Nokwanda says agree, Tokozo descriptive, Neo says agree. Right, so yes, you. I think many poems can fall maybe into two categories because all of them kind of describe something. But remember we said a lyric poem, there we go. A lyric poem tells, talks about the poet's feelings the narrator, the narrator's feelings. So this is this boy saying, I hate it when people call me this and this and this. So he is describing his feelings. And if I read the poem aloud, it's it has a nice sound. It's meant to be read aloud. If you like these poems, remember you can find them on Ken, Ken Nesbitt's website, um, Poetry for Kids. So you can go check it out. Let's read 
The last one, I'm clever whenever. I'm clever whenever there's no one around. Alone on my own, I profess I'm profound. In private, I'm Einstein. Secluded, I'm smart. My genius increases the more I'm apart. If you think I'm clueless, it isn't a trick. When people are present, I'm dumb as a brick. But don't think I'm daft or not mentally sound. Whenever I'm clever, there's no one around. Right, so what kind of poem is this? There we go, everybody saying descriptive. Because this boy or girl or whoever is at word is describing him or herself, saying, I am very clever. So let me just check if you do understand this. Is this person saying, I'm always clever? Is he always clever? No. When is he the most clever? When is he the most clever? Alone. Yes, when he's alone, when there's no one around. Because sometimes when we think to ourselves, mm, I understand this or that, but as soon as you open your mouth, you don't sound so clever. Um, so whenever there's someone around, he feels very stupid, as dumb as a brick. But he knows he's not dumb. He knows he's actually very smart. Do you also feel like that sometimes? You know the answer, but you don't know how to say it. And when you speak, it comes out all wrong and you sound so silly. Yes. Dante says yes. Yes, maybe. Says Docozo. I think everybody feels like this sometimes. Right, so let's move on to the poem that we will discuss today. I will read it to you, but first you have to look at some pictures. <laughs> Dante said, especially when you are at school. Yes, if your teacher suddenly asks you a question and you are not prepared, you can sound a little bit silly. Right, so I'm going to show you some pictures and then you tell me what you think this is about. So right now, still pretty easy. Let's add a little fish and mm, now it seems a bit odd. What do you think this poem is about? Okay, fish doing what? <laughs> fish playing tennis, under attack, fish tennis, a fish that plays tennis. Right, you guys are too smart for me. You are right. The poem is about a fish or some fish, actually. It's not just about one fish. Some fish playing tennis. Remember the word fish can be both a singular and a plural. That means if I say my fish, um, my fish, fish started playing tennis, then... Um, it can mean one fish or many fish. So we have to figure out. Right, let's listen. Caleb said he's heard this poem. All right, that's good. Let's see if you can um, answer the questions today, Caleb. So I'm going to read it to you right now. You can just listen and then I will show it to you. My goldfish took up tennis. They installed a little net at the bottom of their fish tank for the first official set. They got tennis balls and rackets. They got tennis shoes and shorts. For my fish are fond of tennis more than any other sports. It's a funny thing to watch them when they practice every day. As the tennis balls they serve each other always float away. Right, 
my first thought is how does a goldfish hold a tennis racket? But maybe, I don't know, maybe they figured something out. Maybe they hold it with their fins or their, or their mouths. Right, so there is the, the little poem. Let's just read through the questions. Don't answer yet because remember, we're going to answer questions about the structure first, but we do need to read it again. So number one, two, three, four, let's just read through the questions. What is the title of the poem? Who is the poet? That's the person who wrote the poem. What are the rhyming words in this poem and how many syllables does, does each rhyming word have? So let's see. I think for this part, the first part, we don't really need to read it. We can just check. What is the title of the poem? There we go, Kayla said. My goldfish took up tennis. And if we put it into a complete sentence, it will be the title is, and then you have your quotation marks, my goldfish took up tennis in quotation marks and full stop. But I'm excusing all the, all the punctuation right now because I know it's not as easy for you guys to type it as it is to write it. My goldfish took up tennis. There we go. And who is the poet? There we see so many of you already started answering. Kayla, Dane, Nokwanda, Kalem, Neo. Oh, there is a very long name that I am not even going to try to pronounce. And Zinzi and Dante, Zoe and Tokoza. You all said Ken Nesbitt. How do we put it into a sentence? The poet is Ken Nesbitt. I can also say Ken Nesbitt wrote the poem or Ken Nesbitt is the poet. Right. Oh, I almost showed you the answer of the next one. So what are the rhyming words? Remember I said, if we look at rhyming words, I don't have to read the entire poem. I just have to look at these words at the end. Let me just erase that. because that is not a rhyming word right so just look at the last words let me see what you guys write look at the last words of each line you don't need to look at other words so yes i see many of you have already said net and set that's the only two words that rhyme in the first stanza how about the next stanza? Rackets and shorts don't rhyme, guys. Look carefully. What's the next two rhyming words? I see people jumping to the third stanza. I want to see the second stanza's words. Ooh. Caleb, you gave us everything. And Nokwanda, you've got it. Katekile and yes, I think Kayla. All right, so most of you said shorts and sports. Tennis and rackets, they don't rhyme with anything here. And then the last stanza, which two words? Because now we see, okay, every stanza there's, stanza, there's just two words that rhyme. The others don't rhyme. Day and away, says Neo and Dane, and Kayla, and Wulu, <laughs> okay, and Siseko. You guys are smart, eh? There's day, there's a way. And so right now it's actually very quick because we only have six words that we have to work with. How do we know to test for syllables? Let me see. I don't want to know which ones have one and two. I want to know how do we test? How do we test how many syllables a word has? There are two ways. I want to hear both ways from you guys. Clap. Yes, Enzi, you are correct. What's the other way? Mm. 
Ma'am, you put your hand under your chin. That's correct. Caleb. So if not slap, Neo, who do you want to slap? All right. So your the two ways are you clap out the words. So for every new um, big sound, I'm not talking about phonic sounds. I'm talking about when there's a new part of the word, you clap it out or you put your hand under your chin. Every time your chin moves, um, it's... Well, 99% of the time it will be, it will indicate a new syllable. Right, so let's all do it together. Those of you who want to put your hand under, the, under your chin, remember, you have to say the word out loud. You can't whisper it and we will clap it. So let's clap the first one. Net. How many syllables? There we go. One. Next one. Set. Also one. Just check the spelling of syllables. How about shorts? Shorts, or if I put my hand under my chin, shorts, it only moves once. There we go. You guys are so quick. Also just one. How about sports? Sports, just one. Next one, day. Also, one, and the last one, away. How many syllables? Great. I see you guys are so sharp. I can't ask any question that you don't know the answer of. Net, set, shorts, sports, day, and away. So now we will answer questions about the, about the, the poem itself. We only have five questions today because after this, I still want to talk to you guys a little bit about tomorrow. So don't go anywhere when we are done with these questions. We, we need to talk about tomorrow and we need to, there's just a few things I want to discuss with you guys. So I'm going to read the questions and then we will read the, the poem again together. I want all of you to read it with me. Remember in the exam, you won't have someone whispering the words into your ear. You will have to read by yourself. So those of you who struggle with reading or who read very slowly, it's a good practice to practice while someone else is reading to just read the words along with them. So you look at the screen, you try to read with me and see if you are correct. All right, let's, let's read the question. I'm not even looking at answers right now because I haven't asked you to answer anything. We're just reading the questions. Number one, read with me. Can a fish really play tennis? Don't answer. We're just reading. I'm not going to look at answers, guys, because you're not listening to me. Number two, what kind of poem is this? Number three, read with me. Why do you say so? Number four, let's read together. Why is it funny for the narrator to watch them? And then number five, we'll just talk about you. What sport or sports are you fond of? And now we will read the poem together again because we need to make sure we have the right answers and what's going to happen while you do this in the exam is you as you read through the poem you're going to see oh okay yes yes that was a question so you can underline as soon as you see something that you think oh that was one of the questions you can use a highlighter like this and highlight the words or use a pencil and underline it Okay, so let's read together. I'm going to read slowly so all of you can read aloud with me from the top. My goldfish took up tennis. Now let's go to the poem because right now we only read the, the title. My goldfish took up tennis. They installed a little net at the bottom of their fish tank for their first official set. They got tennis balls and rackets. They got tennis shoes and shorts. For my fish are fond of tennis. 
more than any other sports. It's a funny thing to watch them when they practice every day. As the tennis balls, they serve each other, always float away. So as we read this time, I was thinking about, I was just picturing the fish, you know, um, wearing the shorts. And I was wondering how would they wear the tennis shoes? Maybe also on a special fin. Right, so let's read number one. Can a fish really play tennis? I want a full, complete answer. There we go. Oof, so many answers. No, the fish can't play tennis because they don't have hands and feet. There we go. They don't play tennis. Says, oh, you guys are so quick. I can't even read everything. I'm just going to scan through it. All of you are correct. They can't. But you can, um, you can explain why you say so. I just said, no, it can't. Uh, you can say, like some of you have, like they don't have hands. They don't, they can't hold a racket. They don't have feet. Maybe they can play tennis without feet. They will just like swim with the tennis racket in their hands, but they don't have hands. So that's the biggest problem, right? What kind of poem is this? Now you have to think back. I want to get a sentence then Tokozo says it is a narrative poem. Let's see what the others say. I see some of you have said narrative, but you didn't write a sentence. Neo says it's a narrative poem. Monique says it's a narrative poem. All right, Dane and Dante. Great guy. Oh, not, yes, it was Dante, right? A narrative poem. It is a narrative poem. You are correct. We cannot say it is a poem of narrative. We say it is a narrative poem. So in the same way, we cannot say it is a book of big. We have to say it is a big book. So you have to put the adjective before the noun. Right, so why do you say this is a narrative poem? Try to put it in a sentence. Kayla said, because it's funny. There's something else. There's another reason. Why is this a narrative poem? There we see Zinzi said, it describes what happens. What is this, Nokwanda? It describes um, the, f oh, the feeling of the writer. Um, remember when we're talking about feelings, it's the, the lyric poem. So if you give a reason, it has to be a reason why this poem is a narrative poem. So those of you who said, yes, it's like telling a story. It describes the things that happen, right? So... The poem tells a story. That is why this is a narrative poem. Why is it funny for the narrator to watch them? This answer you can find in the in this fourth stanza. Look over here. Zinzi says the tennis balls fly up. Or float away, says Nokwanda. Yes, if we read here, we see it's a funny thing to watch them when they practice every day as the tennis balls, they serve each other, always float away. There we go. So that is your answer. It is funny because the tennis balls, they serve each other, always float away. So those of you who said anything about the tennis balls floating away or... Um, you can't really say fly up because in this is in water, right? So in water, we don't fly up. We float, we float up or float away. And let me quickly hear, what sports are you fond of? What do you like? 
I want to wait for about 10 responses. I'm going to read. If you give me a sentence, I am fond of something or I like. Zinzi says, I like swimming. I'm just going to read it if it's in a sentence. Caleb said, I am fond of soccer. Neo said, I like high jump. Zoe said, I like swimming. Noquanda <clears throat> said, I like netball. Sibusiso said the same, I like netball. Monique said, funny enough, I'm fond of swimming. <laughs> Just like the fish, right? And Dante, I'm fond of athletics. Porcello, I like netball. Tokozo, I like racing. Is that racing with the little go-kart or what? And that long name that I cannot pronounce, you said like soccer. And then Kira said, I like swimming. Kayla said, I am fond of netball and rock climbing. I love rock climbing too. I just don't do it that often. Tokoza says, in cars. Wow. I hope you're not driving yourself. And then Dane says, soccer and rugby is what I like. And Mulu says gymnastics, netball, and hockey. Wow, you guys seem very athletic and sporty. That's good. I hope you've been doing some of the sports while you were in lockdown. I'm going to continue here. Let me just see. Remember, don't go anywhere. We still need to discuss for a few minutes what we're going to do tomorrow. But for your homework, I want you to write your own narrative poem. Okay, so you guys can stop typing now. Look at the screen quickly. You can write about anything. You only have to write four lines, just four. And then try to make line two and four rhyme. Okay. Quickly take a screenshot or you can even find this homework when you go to the website, um, the school's website. You'll find your worksheets. But if you don't want to do that, just take a picture or take a screenshot of what you're seeing right now. So you have to write a narrative poem, something that happened, maybe something that happened during lockdown. And you can write about anything. Right. Don't bye-bye yet because you don't have all the information yet. Just stay for two more minutes. Right. So let me quickly tell you. This, um, uh, tomorrow will be my last day teaching you guys. I'm very sad about that because I'm going to miss all of you. Um, so I really want you to connect with me. If you want to send me an email, here's my email address. Send me an email address, then we can stay in touch. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, I can't go into the details now of why, why. I see everybody's asking me why. Um, I am moving to a different subject, guys, but I still want to hear from you. I still want to hear what's up. I want to see your homework. I can even help you if you're um, struggling with some of the English stuff that we've done that you don't understand. So quickly write down my email address because if you don't have it, there's no way that we can, that we can stay in touch. So those of you who are not coming tomorrow, like Caleb, Caleb, quickly write down my email address, then you can stay in touch with me, all right? And um, tomorrow, you have to be on time. Please don't be late. Our class starts at one o'clock, and at, on the dot at one o'clock, I will start giving instructions. So if you miss that, then you might not be able to play the game with us because there are certain things that you need to follow. I will send you a link. And I will send you a password that you have to put in. And if you miss that, I'm just scared that you that you won't be able to join the game. So please, 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 even come early. Then you can have a chat with your friends um, for 10 minutes before the class starts. But don't be late. If there's any class that you have to be on time for, this is tomorrow's class. Otherwise, you will miss the game. And it's really cool. I don't know if you've played Kahoot before, but it's... It's such a fun game. All right. Thank you for all the wonderful messages, guys. I've really grown very fond of you guys, and I will miss you a lot. So just send me an email so that we can stay in touch. All right.
and then you can follow us. Oh, here is the Kahoot slide. We will play Kahoot. Remember to bring an extra device and then follow us on social media. You will get all the codes tomorrow. Okay, have a nice day and see you tomorrow at one.